Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGaga.com and in this video we are going to look at the new XMatch function of Excel and this new function is here to replace the match function that we know and love so much. Now this video follows a video I did about a week or so ago on the new XLOOKUP function. And these two functions were released within the last few weeks only to Office Insiders at the moment. And I'll put a link in the description of this video so that you know how that you can subscribe to be an Office Insider if you want. Anybody can be one. But at the moment it's only available to the Insiders and will soon be released to all Office 365 subscribers. So let's have a look at how this function can differ to the original match function that we have. Now in this first example, I have a Premier League table with the rankings at the point of time of setting this up. And you can see in column K, I've currently got uh, Bournemouth in cell K2, and I want to know their position in this league table and how many points have got. Now the purpose of the match function is to return the position of an item. So perfect, a nice simple example to start us off. Now in cell L2, if I was going to look briefly at the original match function, then this is what we will have. It prompts me for a lookup value, a lookup array, and then a match type. So it allows me to look for Bournemouth in the array of teams and then I have to specify a match type and if I just move on to that argument the default was always to return an item less than the one you're looking for if it isn't able to find it. So a similar last question to VLOOKUP or the new XLOOKUP but this time the X match will default to exact match. So let's look at how quick and easy it is. Let's escape this equals x match. Still returns the relative position of an item. Same job. And you can see it's very similar, but we do have four arguments. We've got some more potential now. And there's a lot of similarities between this x match and the x lookup video if you saw that one of mine. But the lookup value is going to be the cell containing Bournemouth. I'm looking for Bournemouth at the moment, but there is a drop down list in that cell and we can change that. I'm going to fix that cell so that I can use it in the points uh, task in the cell next door. So, comma, lookup array is the array of teams. I'll just select A2 to A21 there and I'll fix that cell. And then I can just close bracket. Because the last two arguments are optional, but the key thing this time is that the X match defaults to exact match. So as easy as that, Bournemouth are in position 9. You can see they're in row 10 of the spreadsheet, but position 9 of the table. So most of the time when people are using the match function, they are after an exact match. So it's always a little strange that it didn't default today. It defaulted to less than, and we had to put 0 in that final argument. Now, you don't. The 99% of times you're using it, you do not. Now, let's see it used with index. For those of us who are aware of the match function, its classic use is to be used with a function known as index. And we can still use that. And I think that's very important, because although I'm a fan of the new XLOOKUP function that's coming out, it does mean that we don't have that column number argument of VLOOKUP anymore, which I was a fan of using in various techniques. But I've still got my index match for that. And we have an improved match. How about that? Let's begin by copying over the X match function that we created into the column next door. And then we'll pop into that cell. Because I fixed those references so that I could copy it across saves us writing it over again. The only difference this time is I'm going to throw in the index function before it 
so that I can reference the array of points. And I guess I may as well fix that so it's consistent with what else I have, although I'm not planning on copying this. A comma and then the row number is being returned by our XMatch function. So I can just simply close bracket on the end and as easy as that I have my index match to get the points for whatever club is mentioned in cell K2. Bournemouth, seven points. But if I was to change this club now to Leicester City, they're in position five with eight points. Or if I was to change it to Southampton, then currently 10th uh, position with seven points. So that is the X match and also it combined with index match at the moment showing the benefit of it defaulting to that exact match. But let's look at what some of those extra arguments that it was offering us can do for us. So now I'm on this sales list. And you can see we have a salesperson reference down column A. I'm imagining we've got three sales reps here. But for some reason we get information monthly, which is in monthly order you can see. And the references are always a little bit of a mixture. They always have the initials of the salesperson at the front, but then the number is dependent on something else, and it just comes to us like this monthly from our from our export. What we want to know is last month's sales though, and at least we know it's in monthly order, so the most recent month will be at the bottom. Now in cell F2, I'm returning for salesperson DH at the moment. Cell G2, it's an index match situation. Index on the sales values. Not going to worry about fixing it this time. Comma brings me into row number. X match time. Look up value. Now, I have DH in cell F2, but that is just part of what's in that cell. It's going to be DH something. So what I'm going to use here is a wildcard search. So I'm going to reference cell F2, put in my ampersand, and then in double quotes the asterisk. So I'm using the wildcard character to say that it's the value in cell F2 and then something else. Now if I continue with my comma, lookup value is the array of references there, and then another comma. And this is where we're doing something a little bit new. Because it defaults to exact match as mentioned, 99% of the time what you want. We then have exact match or next smaller item, next most likely use. And I did demonstrations of that type of lookup in my X lookup video. So I'll save them for this one. So a lot of you will be seeing examples of stuff I've shown many times. Then we've got next larger item, but then we have wildcard character match. Now this is a new option. And I'm going to need it right now. So number two, I need to enable my use of wildcards. Comma. And now we've got, am I searching first to last or last to first? We're defaults to first to last. So if I was not going to use this argument and I closed off my X match, closed off my index and ran it, I get 1328. So that's the first sales number in this list for DH. So you're always defaults from the start and most of the time you want that. You can see the wild card is working. But if we go back into our formula here, back towards the end, comma after the two, last to first is minus one. You can type it or I could double click it. Now I'll run it and I've got 610, the last month's sales total for DH. Pretty awesome stuff. So that is a look at the new X match function of Excel, an improvement on the previous match function in a few ways. The default into exact match, uh, the extra option for wildcard characters and being able to search last to first. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.